Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and welcome to my channel. I make time-lapse videos of how I did my paintings. The painting I'm doing today is a pair of macaws. This is the first time I'm doing a rather big painting of a feathered animal. I don't really know how to paint the feathered bodies. We'll see how it goes. My canvas was primed with gesso and a layer of oil primer that makes sketching easier as it's smoother and easier for me to erase the pencil sketch or even the first layer of paint if I needed to. After the sketching, I go over the lines with burnt amber that's mixed with sensodor. I roughly place the color for the background and slowly continue with painting the eyes. I want to make sure I get the shape of the eyes on point. Although the eyes are small, there are slight differences in the thickness of the black rim as it curves around the eyes. That would add to the likeness to the actual eye. Next, I work on the beaks. Start with the darkest grey, following the lines and shapes of the reference photo. After I painted in the dark and light grey, then I gently blend them together and a convincing beak would start to emerge. Then the face, I find the base color of their faces, paint that in and then add in the individual feathers. Here I just remembered I am supposed to paint the big ivory color instead of black for the macaw on the left. For the body, I start painting from the darkest area, followed by different shades of red without any indication of the shapes of the feathers. I have forgotten that the color red is very transparent and it's super hard to cover any brush strokes with the red. My first layer of red here on hindsight should have been more careful with the strokes and should have started to paint the shapes of the feather from here. And I want to mention here that in my reference photo, the bird on the left is actually a green macaw, but I wanted a red macaw. So I just use my imagination to paint it red. I wanted a bokeh effect for the background, so that's why I am painting a lot of round shapes. On hindsight, my round shapes are too uniform. I should make some much bigger. Here I go over the eyes again, saturating it with thicker paint. You can see how the thickness of the black line around the eyes changes. Along with the highlight on the top, gives it the illusion of a round shape. Painting the beak now seems really easy, just painting different shades of grey and lightly blend them. And I add some whites to the edge of the beak to portray the thickness of the beak. Also some very thin white lines to indicate the um, are those scars just to indicate the texture and also avoiding it being completely smooth which would look fake. I have made the mistake again of painting the big of the red macaw black. Then I suddenly remembered that this is a red macaw. I have previously googled and I believed a red macaw has ivory color upper big not black. So I paint over the upper pig here. I just want to add that this video is about 10 minutes long. If you wish to watch a longer version of this video, uh, that is slightly over 20 minutes, you can go over to my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. I really am not thinking much when painting the brunch, I just start by focusing on where the dark colors are and I just follow the color and the shapes. After the lightest colors are all filled, now I can look at it as a whole and see where I should put in the darkest brown to accentuate the deep cracks on the brunch. Now the second layer of the feather, I start again by putting in the darker stone, some lines to indicate the feathers, making sure they are facing the correct direction. Hi. 
Halfway through the red feathers, I work on the blue wings first. As I'm right-handed, it will be easier for me to paint the left side first and then continue with the body of the red macaw. After I put in the darker tone, which indicates the shape of the feather, I fill the spaces with a lighter tone of red, blending slightly with a darker red for a more natural look, but not to overblend them so that we can still roughly see the shapes of the feathers. When the feathers are more or less done, I add a lighter tone for highlights. At this point, I realized some of the feathers at the tail should be of blue color. I paint the blue over the still wet red color. Now for the second macaw, its head has a more complicated color compared to the red macaw. Referring to the reference photo closely, I work slowly to paint in the black, dark yellow and green. Then just like the red macaw, I first put in the darkest, almost orangey yellow to sort of outline the shapes of the feathers. Next the green and blue wings, I outline the feather with a darker blue, then slowly fill them with a slightly lighter blue. Here I am adding a brighter tone of red as the highlight. I'm also adding some more dark red to make it look more three-dimensional. I'm so glad I have used the correct tone of yellow for the first layer, as yellow is also very transparent. If I have painted the first layer too strong or too dark, I will have a crazy hard time painting the second layer. You can see that there's a difference in the width of the feathers between the two birds, of which the yellow one looks more realistic. Something to improve on if I am painting macaws again in the future. Here I am adding some final touches, some individual feathers on the macaw. Now the nails, I have to be careful here of where I put the white reflections. For example, the second nail from the left. If I put the highlight in the center instead of towards the left, the nail would not look like it's slanted a little towards the left side. Then I paint a dark grey for the shadow area on the talon. After that, I fill them with a lighter grey. Then I use the darker grey to dab on the talons to show the texture on the skin. And then this painting is done. I hope you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.